So during the Bodleian Library Cadiz Faro book raids, Walter Raleigh was above Faro, 23rd to 27th July 1596, and obtained the Book of Predictions at Milru Stoy. Raleigh read in six languages, followed the instructions, and made his way 30 miles directly west to the coastal Golden Arch, Perth and Gateway, and this cave of predictions fulfilling the end times. Raleigh explored from midday Saturday to 4 a.m. Sunday, 27, 28 July, 1596, which gives the numbers 2, 8, 7, 21, which translates as the second royal shin. 8 over 7 means royal, 21 means the shin. Put my marks. A Portuguese woman brought him a pot of tea, which is kind of how I got local knowledge of the story. And he was a smoker, so with the smoke in the Book of Predictions, Raleigh sketched and codified the end times and times of the end. This became the Rosicrucian cosmography and works with Bible revelation of St. John the Divine, which is posthumous Jesus. Rosicrucians are all about the New Age. That's all they're about, New Age. So here's the Rosicrucian cosmography laid over the top of the cave. And here it is with the white bits cut out. And you can see that Noah's Ark rests on the rock that's already there, that's in the cave. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Ta-da, ta-da. Yeah. It's quite accurate. So Noah's Ark rests on the rock. Oriens means east. It also means the rising sun. And sun is written S-U-N and S-O-N. So it can be the rising S-O-N. It's the creation of the new age. Fatuma, or Lynx which means future links in the year of our Lord, 2014. And then if we take out the uh, letter opener, there's actually a cross mark on the cave there, 1030. So it's, it's saying is that with this letter opens, you punch them out, the keys required. So these are the keys. So these are given to me by the male and female Sangreal. So they were, this was the key to the Rosicrucian cosmography and key to the cave and key to the end times new age. They didn't tell me that. <laughs> they just said, we'll give them a royal mark, right? And they took a lot of time discussing which royal mark to give them. And, you know, these things can be humble or expensive. It doesn't matter. What, what matters is the import of it in, in terms of a key. I've extended the sword coming out of the cave and the sword, when it's the natural lines of the sword are extended out, it touches on the black ewe lamb. There's a, a lump of rock there that's black and it's in the shape of a black ewe lamb. The penguin or, or words with dictionary symbolism, and black ewe lamb means the right to rule the world. The cliff face drawing earlier, the swan sits on the bed. So the royal swan there it makes Jesus' prophecy. And it says the shin, I've put the X in under the shin where the, the X marks the true king of England. Here's me standing with the sword of the Duke of Saxon, Coburg and Gotha. And I just had the camera just sitting on the table and I was just mucking around in the morning with the sword, generally just, genuinely just having a look at it, right? It's a very important sword. It's kind of the sword that's used to mark the person who will represent the end times new age. So with this arm coming out of the castle, my arm where it would be in the, the hilt and, of the sword and the hand where it would be, the sword was actually at the same angle, right? You see that? Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is 2012. You see how that's a perfect shot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah? 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 And this is me with a just a video camera playing, just mucking around, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's me with the sword of the Duke of Satch and Coburg and Gotha marking the part of the Black Ewe Lamb. Mm -hmm. Rose Christians look at that and they go, wow, that's a big wow. So there's the Black Ewe Lamb in the sunlight. And it looks orange and black in the middle. So that makes the right to rule the world. Up the top, at about 11.30, I've got a white bat with two big red dots under the wings, and that's where that bat lived. And the white bat with red circles under its wing translates as Templar angel. Templars are under red and white. Templars are in charge of king-making, supposedly. 
The 604 marks Gregory. So Gregory's got the snake with the crown on it, which means they're making a Gregory, second name Gregory, or a Boris, which is the ring around the sun, which means that his values will be the values for the next era. The Temple of the Rose of the Cross, which is this cosmography, the Temple of the Rose of the Cross identifies the predicted one in the end times and times of the end. Part of the confirmation process working in conjunction with Genesis Revelation, the Book of Predictions, Heb said, and the tradition received. So we've got Gregory and we've got Tut right in the middle above the castle church. It says King Tut, son of Sun King Artanatan, and now Rosicrucian Boy King, Ouroboros. When you represent the end times in the new age, you become the Ouroboros, the ring around the sun, which makes you a vehicle for ISIS. So what they've tried to do is create distractions with the spiritual ISIS being a military operation. There's King Tut there. It's the rising of the sun, sun, creation of the new age. Joseph, which is the name of the father. Gregory, which is 604. King Tut. Son of Sun King Atenat, now Rosicrucian Boy King Ouroboros. And the fulfillment of the royal swan, which Jesus' prophecy fulfilled. Future Links was there. The Shin is the hidden king of England. The Black of Lamb is the right to rule the world. It's in a field about July 2014. And beware in the cave, me with the sword, all pointing at King Tut, the Boy King. Mm -hmm. That's all the symbology they threw at it. So here's the Rosicrucian cosmography again with the sword extended as the length that it would be. And there's the black ewe lamb there with me standing next to it. And there's the cosmography there. You see the letter opening. You see how it actually marks the entrance to the cave. You actually walk down that steep craggy bit safest walk. It's about a, about a four-metre drop. What? Rally drawn as Rosicrucian cosmography was actually this pathway coming down here. It's got a totally vertical cliff on the other side. It's the scariest path you've ever been on. Mm. This is now reversed, so you start to get different meanings. The sword's now heading to the right. The hand of God is coming down. It's holding a shredded snake, which means the end of an era, because Ouroboros is the ring around the sun. So it's making way for the new snake with crown, which is wrapped around the boy. The 1604, when you flip it backwards, it reads cross AD1, which is saying this person's representing the next age. The 16 reads as 01, so that's the beginning of the end times new age in the year one. Mm -hmm. Tuts, the boy king. Farmer becomes A-M-A-F, which means love. 18 reads 82, which is the shin, because I was 21 that year. Ark means Noah. The shin in proportion is actually marked. The septum trio is actually marked on me. Caveat reads 13 T3 vid, which translates as King Jesus, it seems. Nota becomes Aton, which is Akhenaten, which is the sun king, father of King Tut. A small, medium, large pyramid, the same as in Egypt. And there's me with the sword at Sintra. It's the 1st of March, 2012, the sword. It's only been out twice in about 80 years. That's actually the theosophical society behind the sword where King Don Ferdinand II used to go. And they closed that down about 1985. It's still there. It's still theirs, but no one's been in it. They haven't had any meetings since 1985. And they do that when they're right on track and everything's happening exactly as predicted. Don't touch anything. <laughs> So there's the black ewe lamb. Two smaller baby black ewe lambs to the left, created by Plasma Arc. 
And the people who are into symbology look at that and they go, wow, that's right to rule, ruled. Yeah, that's a good representation. It's the watchful dog overlooking the black lamb and then they carved king into the cave. Very hot there. Here you've got a good representation of Raleigh's royal ark sailing in front of me two to four times a day. I just happened to take a photo of the pirate ship ship on top of the watchful dog. Mm-hmm. And if you look at Raleigh's drawing of Noah's Ark and the shape of the mountain, you see Noah's Ark with a straight bank, yeah. the Noah's Ark drawing, and you see the rock here, see the straight bit of the rock? Yeah. What I'm saying is that it's the same. He's actually drawn that rock. So I don't think there's any question that yeah. he's drawn his Rosicrucian cosmography from my cave. Yeah, well, I could definitely see that. That's quite a fortuitous picture because I, I didn't, I didn't see the Rosicrucian cosmography until about December two thousand and seventeen, and I took this photograph July two thousand fourteen. So there's me again with the sword, as where it would be. Um, see where the, see where the hilt of the sword is, mm-hmm. and the hand. Sorry. Hilt of the sword in the hand is exactly where my hilt of the sword of the hand is. Yep. And it points towards the ship. So it points towards Noah's Ark and Raleigh's Ark Royal. And the watchful dog, which represents the head said with Anubis, as preparation to represent the end times and new age. The center bottom photo. It's the 4 by 3 photo, and that's how they present him. So there's no one looks like that. That's just gaunt. So Walter Raleigh, on the left picture, I've increased his width from 4 by 3 to 16 by 9 which is 1.33, or 33%. Then I've taken my picture just using photo booths. It's not a great picture, but it's roughly the same angle. If you look at his top lip and my top lip, it's pretty much the same. The lines around our nose are pretty much the same. It appears to be one raised nostril, and I've got one raised nostril exactly the same. The eyebrows are not dissimilar, and he's got one raised eyebrow, which I have. He's got bags under his eyes, which I have. A very similar shaped forehead. And if I grew my moustache like his, which I did have it, and allowed my goatee to grow a bit more, I could be a semblance. Mm -hmm. So on the right-hand photo, there's there's me overlaid on him at about 33%. Bottom left, Walter Raleigh is an anagram of Grail Hallett, and he was all about the Grail. That's what he was doing. This Grail stuff he was doing. See this manual book there? Yeah. Here, I rotated it, brought it up, and turned it into a rectangle. See what codes it has. And it's got Cadiz written on it. It's got an image of a white bird flying. It's got Tavera, which is near Milru. It's got Milru, and it's got S for sovereign, and 52. And I was 52 years old during the end times new age. Mm-hmm. There's the two of us. Walter Raleigh translates as WRI Grail Hallett, and he's my great times 30 grandfather. I see the family resemblance. You can? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cheekbones, forehead, nose, nostrils, top lip. Even the hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that. So the Holy Grail lineage was about the kings and queens of England who were executed, not being executed, and then breeding. And that became the Holy Grail lineage. Mary, Queen of Scots, Queen Anne Boleyn, Walter Raleigh was married into royalty, King Charles I, Holy Grail lineage, yeah. Walter Raleigh occupied Sherbourne Old Castle in 1994, 
And then he got the Rosicrucian Cosmography uh, Book of Predictions information in July 1596. And then he came back and he moved out of Sherborne Castle and built Sherborne Castle, the new one, and the old one got named Old. Architecturally speaking, you know, he's, done a, he's done a really good job. He's really worked on some forms and some architectural challenges. First plastered building in England. Sherborne, which equals Sherborne, born of a sharer. And my father was a champion sharer. So he got that name quite well. So the English crown became the British crown in 1603. And the British crown then physically stole the crown of Aragon, which was the crown of Spain, the same year, 1603. And the same year they jailed Sir Walter Raleigh in order to leech his secrets. And that's all symbolized in Sherborne Castle which he owned from 1596 to 1603. Mm-hmm. I got this little book, made them into rectangles and then joined them up. And that's why those little squirrely hand, planty hand thing is. You join those up and then you hold the four of them together and it shows Lule at the top and Stoy down the bottom and it gives 2.44, which is the time of the end times New Age changeover. Gives 911 BP and the sun and the symbol. That's my symbol for the book of predictions. Eight over seven means royal. So you're looking at one eighth of the distance or seven eighths of the distance. Now, when they came up from Faro to Mulru, they went to Tavera and they were repelled and they went west to the left to Lule and they were repelled. So it means they went to Mulru and Ishtoi. Mulru Ishtoi to Lule, which is a very Marian town with the Marys live, that's eight miles. So that eight over seven, one-seventh of that is a mile. So exactly a mile northwest of Mulru. There's a giant in the landscape, 2.78 miles long, with his knee bent and busting out of a, a cosmic egg. The mouth of that is exactly one mile from the Mulru temple. The Book of Predictions was stored in the mouth of the giant. Mouthpiece, yeah? Mm-hmm. That little book on an angle on the side of Walter Raleigh's drawing is actually giving codes. It says 23.5 degrees, which is the tilt of the earth. It gives 25.7, which is the date of the times of the end in 2017. It writes Cadiz, Tavera, Mulru. Some of the words are doubled up one clear message says the white bird flying n times s52 which means sovereign 52 years old that's how they codified it it's fantastic tr means true royal and the, the r is wrapped around the sun 2 colon 44 which is 2:44 p.m which was the first minute of the new age they went from Cadiz, blew up some ships there, didn't steal any books, didn't even land. Then went to Faro, parked outside Faro, went up to Mulru, got the book of predictions, went to the cave from midday till 4 a.m. the next day, and then went past Sagres. It's about three miles up from Sagres, is Hercules' resting place. So here is National Geographic giving confirmation. They're talking about. So Walter Raleigh's grandson, who was the Prince of Pirates, Black Sam Bellamy. So there's a pirate ship. The article inside is Black Sam Bellamy. He was the only one to conquer Blackbeard and steal his ship. He actually took Blackbeard's ship and put Blackbeard and 12 of his crew in a little dinghy in the middle of the ocean, (laughs) paddling around like (laughs) pugwash. That was Prince of Pirates, Black Sam Bellamy. And then the same... National Geographic, is Akhenaten, Mm -hmm. who's the sun king, who's the father of King Tut, which is what the cosmography is about. So obviously someone knew. Absolutely primitive landscape. So you've got Jupiter, known as Zeus. When it comes by to, to Earth, different charge between the planets, it sets out plasma arcing. Between the two. Right. 
when it's done its plasma arcing, which is to cut all these cliff faces, absolutely vertical cuts, like this lower level there, that's 40 foot down to the sea. So if you're looking at this one here, that's 70 foot straight to the sea. It leaves a spherical indentation. It's a sign that it's plasma arcing. And I thought, oh, yeah, I've got one spherical indentation in the cave. That's interesting. And then I started to count them all, and there's 10. So there's one there that's cut into the side of the cliff. One, two is another one, three is another one, cut into the side, four and five. Between four and five, there's actually me standing kind of like this. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right? In the same position as the guy in the Rosicrucian cosmography three years before I even saw it. And I'm standing there in the same position. Mm. So I've marked it there in, in black and white, so it draws your attention. So there's all these plasma arcing. Which were not myth, they were actually recording history. Yeah, well, there's mythological stories related to this too, because where I showed on the earlier plan drawing of Sagres, which means holy, that's at the southwesternmost tip of Europe. Mm -hmm. And just three miles up from that, is Hercules' resting place, and that's where the Ark left from. It's the last place that it arced to. The rough pathway that Walter Raleigh's drawn there at the bottom of the picture, and there's the arcing there. And the arcing is noted by a sphere. It's cut out of any sort of hard rock. It doesn't matter how hard it is, and it's very close to the edge, and that is so close to the edge. Mm -hmm. You're talking about six inches of rock there. You know, well, what causes it to to jump from one location to the other? Is it like arcing and then pulling back and arcing again? Yeah, well, it did it at least 10 times in this cave, actually 11 times, because what I'm going to do is show you Zeus strikes the sun. There's a circle there that's about two metres diameter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's got an arm coming into it, almost twisting a knob in the centre, and it's got a man's face here, mouth, nose, eyes, forehead. So that's Zeus tweaking the sun. It's like it's saying that it's the, this is the end times New Age cave, We've got plasma arcing, and this is what's going to happen. He's tweaking the sun or tapping the sun or turning a knob on in the center of the sun. Mm -hmm. Zeus and his mighty thunderbolt. Yeah. It's not lightning bolt. Thunder is sound. So it's a bolt of sound, mm -hmm. and that's how Zeus cut down the times of the end oak tree is with the bolt of sound, thunder, not lightning. Mm -hmm. That's where the White Templar bat lived, which means king-making angel, mm -hmm. very rare bat. So Zeus strikes the sun for the end times new age and new Ouroboros. So that's where that is. There's the Zeus's cave with the Zeus strikes the sun there which is another sphere, and this is a big sphere also cut out by Plasma Arc, exactly 51 kilometres or 51,000 metres from this point here is the centre of this cross. This is a Stoy, Stoy Palace, and it's laid out in a 6-5 pattern. Straight. This is uh, 21 gun salute of kingship. 